Hey guys, and welcome back to the Leia Heil Plan Show. Joining me on the show today, we have former federal agent. He's the co-host of one of the largest, most game-changing podcasts on the internet, and he's also the author of the brand new book, Women Deserve Less. Myron Gaines, welcome to the podcast. Thank How you for having are me on you? the show. Great to have you. How are you doing today? I'm good. Uh, tired, haven't slept yet, but hey, it's okay. Yeah, you're a man. You we don't need to through. sleep. Yeah, we make it happen. I love that. So when I was thinking, how am I going to introduce Myron? Like, how am I going to introduce the Fresh and Fit podcast? It just hit me how influential and successful the podcast has been. Thank you. Because I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of this, but everybody just just has copied everything that you've done. <laughs> you guys have set the gold standard now um, for the entire content creation for the next couple years. I mean, the whatever podcast has kind of copied you pearly things is a little bit similar to you you've really <laughs> set the standard and so I, I was like how am i going to introduce this guy so my question to you is how, like did you expect to be so influential and how does it feel um you know it's it's interesting that you mentioned that you know i always say they can imitate but they can't replicate um we just got I, the thing with us is that it started from a very genuine place where we just want to help guys become better because we noticed like all the fuckery that's going on with dating and how a lot of guys are struggling and quite frankly it started off where I had a fitness channel first, Fresh had a prank channel. And, you know, we both basically met through another YouTuber called Solo TV 84 And, you know, he was doing his thing, you know, womanizing. I was doing my thing, womanizing. And it's like when guys meet each other and they're both like good with girls, it's like, whoa, you're a womanizer? I'm a womanizer. Did we just become best friends? And uh, from there, we kind of built a bond because, you know, for, to be good and went with, lady, with the ladies in Miami, especially, it's very competitive. It's very difficult. So um, there's certain unspoken rules and things that you just kind of understand about the game. So we had a lot of, I guess, similar strategies and everything else like that. So we realized like, okay, um, let's come together, combine forces. And, you know, first it started with fitness and I noticed that guys want to get in shape to get girls. Then I realized like it wasn't just a fitness issue. It was guys stink. They don't dress well. They don't have really charisma. They stink? Oh, yeah. Really? Like, I'm, I'm actually shocked at how much girls Ew. complain about hygiene with men. Really? Like it's, it's actually one of the leading complaints. Oh my God. I yeah. Didn't I didn't realize that until I actually started talking to girls that that's a big contributor to why so many guys fail. Wow. But just guys just don't have their life together, right, right? To be able to attract women. So we're like, all right, we don't just have to teach guys how to get in shape. We got to teach them like everything, get their money on point, be more charismatic, be more charming, etc. So the podcast really started off with male self improvement with the purpose of, you know, becoming a better man than women becoming a byproduct. And then we started bringing girls on the show and, you know, having discussions and debates. And we started to realize like, wow, a lot of modern day women are delusional. So yeah. And then it's just created viral content. And yeah, I wish I could say it's scripted, but no, it's actually all real. And these girls are crazy. You know, what's so <laughs> funny. Um, I, I don't understand how you're able to find all of these crazy women. Um, I was actually going to ask you this later on in the show, but since we're here now, I'm going to just jump straight into it. Your, your perspective on, on women, is it, is it, is it just the women on the show? Like, do you think all women are like that out of interest? No. Uh, so what I've realized is that, because we bring, because one of the biggest criticisms we get is like, oh, you just bring stupid Miami girls on. Right. And the reality is that we bring girls in from different walks of life, right? If you if you actually watch the show at the beginning of the show, we ask, what's your name? How old are you? What's your high education level? What do you do for work? What's your relationship status, et cetera? We brought girls in that have PhDs, master's degrees, et cetera. What I've realized is that Regardless of woman's education level, background, etc., typically there's some commonalities. And what I've come to realize is that a lot of girls have an overinflated sense of self-worth, right? Not all, but I would say a staggering majority. And a lot of them, their wants are not necessarily congruent with reality. So in other words, they don't necessarily qualify for the man that they think that they qualify mm -hmm. for. Every girl is pretty much chasing the same archetype of guy, six foot plus, 100,000 plus a year, charming, charismatic, in good shape, six inch penis all this crap and it's like a minority of men actually meet these requirements and what i've come to realize is thanks to the globalized sexual marketplace with instagram dating apps etc women have access to these men right they're able to get these guys for a night but are they able to keep them long term and i would argue most girls can't they can get them for a night but they can't keep them for a year so um and i would say all that plays into i guess what women think that they deserve versus what they actually qualify for and for all the people that get mad at me, oh, well, you just interview dumb girls, blah, blah, blah. The only difference between a girl that's educated a lot of times, that's a master's degree, that has money, that's successful, is that she's even more stuck in her ways a lot of times because she looks, okay, I'm educated, I make a lot of money, I'm even more entitled to this man because I bring all this to the table. But what they don't realize is that your money, your status, your 
title, etc. It doesn't really matter to a man, and it matters even less so for a guy who has his own money and his own status. It's really frustrating at times, but I look at it like this. Okay, I'm having these dis tough discussions. Like, this is a pain in the ass, but at least the audience can learn mm. that, look, it's literally futile to argue with modern-day women a lot of times because no matter what you say, no matter how logically sound you are, no matter how much sense you make, it doesn't matter because women are ruled by their emotions. They don't feel like it's right. The number one thing that girls always say, we even made a shirt out of it, but I feel like yeah, of course. every time you make a logical statement that makes sense on how the world really works, they say, well, I feel like, and I'm like, listen, it doesn't matter how you feel. What's real? Mm. How you feel and what's real are two different things, but it's very difficult for women to differentiate the two. Yeah, that's Most. true. Most. Not all, right? Some women are very logically sound, but what I've realized is that's a minority, unfortunately. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. And I don't understand as well why um, women get so offended because I actually think that like your content and a lot of the Red Pill content is good for women. Yeah. Like I think it's amazing for women. I think that, I think millennials, millennial women got the worst of feminism. Yes. Like they're hit worse. Yeah. The women now in like their late teens with your kind of content, even though they might be offended by it, We'll just have it at the back of their minds playing as the years go by, you know? I will say this. One thing that I'm really happy about, because I look at the, um, the YouTube studio a lot, and I look at, like, you know, our viewership of females, and it's been going up. We're almost yeah. at 10%. So... <laughs> That's good. Yeah, so... Yeah, it's so, not a misogynistic yeah, podcast it's not, after it's all. It's not. And I always say, right, I always make jokes. I'm like, ha, 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 we're misogynistic, whatever. But if you actually watch the podcast, I would say we're very realistic. And the thing is, is that, yeah, life is sexist. Men have a certain you know view of women and the reality and women have a certain view of, of certain things and i would say the more women are able to look at things objectively speaking and look at the male's lens the faster they'll be able to find a man mm. but the problem is that a lot of women think that the female way of thinking is the right way to think which in some situations it is with child rearing with being nurturing to other people with being um you know sympathetic etc uh, i don't think i think women lack empathy but they're able to be sympathetic mm. But uh, yeah, which is a big difference, Ooh. which I've, I've come to realize that over Ooh. interviewing over 2000 women is women really lack empathy, but they have sympathy, but not empathy. Wait, sorry. Why do you think that is? The reason why is because it's very difficult for women to understand the masculine experience. Yeah, and, of course. and what I've realized also is that um, women are able to sympathize, right? Like, oh my God, my life sucks, blah, blah, blah. Oh my God, I'm so sorry for you. But they don't really give a shit, mm. right? Versus I argue that men have to be empathetic to women because we can't attract and have sex with women unless we're empathetic. Mm. Think about it. If you want to have sex with a girl, right? You have to plan out the date. You have to make sure your place is clean. You got to make sure your toilet doesn't look, have shit stains all over the place, right? You got to make sure the place smells good. You got to have music ready. You got to have condoms ready to go in case she doesn't like to do the raw dog. You have to have Ugh. all these things in place. You have to be co cognizant of her yeah. comfort levels. You have to make her feel comfortable. You have to escalate properly. You have to touch her in a certain way where she doesn't feel awkward. You can't just go in for the kiss and just tongue her down immediately. Ugh. You have to escalate, <laughs> you know, nice and slowly. So men have to be aware of all these things. Yeah. So I would argue that requires an intense amount of empathy because you have to literally be able to put yourself in the woman's shoes mm. and be able to escalate properly to turn her on. Mm. So men must have empathy to be attractive to women. However, women don't have to be empathetic to men to attract men. I always say women have the privilege of just being kind of aloof and men come to them so they don't have to understand men. But men, on Whoa. the other hand, have to understand women to attract yeah. them. We can't get girls unless we understand them. Uh, so... So I want to ask you, but I want to save it for later. Sure. But I, but I, I was we, could, we could go wherever you need to go. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, okay. Well, I, I want to ask you how um, a woman should then, you know, retain a man because, sure. which we'll get to. I'm not, I'm, I actually don't want to ask you just now, but I will get to that. Um, because, you know, you're saying women ha can just be aloof and be quite passive. Yeah. But I'm not sure if that's 100% right, but we can get sure. to that. Um, out of, out of curiosity, the podcast and everything that you have, because I still kind of want to understand how it came about, is um, an incredible setup. Like you mm -hmm. have dozens of cameras, you've got security, you've got so many different angles, like everything is is, is amazing. So yeah. if you don't mind me asking, sure. how did you make your money before that? Because that takes a lot of money to start investing yeah. and, and doing all of this. Was it real estate? Was it crypto? I don't know. Was it being a federal agent? Like how did you yeah. actually- No, I'm very transparent about this? my finances, so I don't have a problem talking about that openly. And this is all public record too, so- When you're searching the internet, Every little thing you do is being recorded and tracked by your internet provider. Search engines and social media companies also record everything you do. Not only is this an invasion of your privacy, but they are then selling your data and monetizing you. This is why you need a virtual private network or a VPN for short. A VPN hides your IP address and safeguards your internet connection through an encrypted tunnel. This way, it shields your digital life from the eyes of those looking to exploit your private information. Private Internet Access VPN gives you more privacy features than any other 
other software, including protection against malware and trackers. When you subscribe to Private Internet Access VPN, you can have it on an unlimited number of devices from your iPhone to your computer, tablet and more. Not only does this protect your privacy, but it also improves your entire digital experience. For example, watching Netflix without private internet access is like getting dozens of gifts for your birthday, but you can only open one. That's because Netflix has a huge catalog of content, but you can only watch a fraction of that based on your location. So with this VPN, you can change your IP address and now you have access to everything Netflix and the entire internet has to offer. Also, you can pay for the subscription using cryptocurrency. Private Internet Access VPN is completely open source, which shows your data isn't being logged. So start protecting yourself with Private Internet Access VPN and use my special link in the description below. When I worked for the government, I was a special agent with Homeland Security Investigations. Basically, I did like Mexican cartel investigations, everything from terrorism, human smuggling, human trafficking, drugs, gun trafficking, everything, right? And I was on the southwest border, then I moved to Miami. So when I was here in Miami Station, as an agent, I was making about $120,000, $130,000 per year. I'm a minimalist. I wear the same clothes all the time. So I pretty much was able to save a good amount of that money. And what happened is I started my fitness business. When I started that fitness business, I was able, I was making around the same amount, about 120 to 130, 140K per year, right? So I pretty much doubled my income. I earned about 300K that year. This is 2019. Wow, that's mistaken. so recent. Yeah. That's it was, crazy. Yeah. So, so with that money that I had saved from the fitness business, um, I put a good amount of it away, right? And um, so inevitably, right, we start to go viral and they bring me in, you know, hey, you know, Myron, you know, you know, you can't be talking like this on, on the Internet. Like, bro, you're a federal agent. Like, and I had to, at the time I had one of the biggest national security cases for Homeland in, in the country. OK, it was a. Okay, I won't t say too. I can't I say too to much say, about yes, it. Can I ask you? Yeah, that? No, yeah. It, it, it was it was it was a national security case concerning. Uh, I'm just going to say the United States, Miami, Ooh. Turks and Caicos, and um, Canada. Sounds like it drugs. Was, uh, Sri Lankans. Sounds like drugs. Yeah, it was it was yeah. no no drugs. Oh, in no this drugs. One. This case actually like, didn't. Okay. This one a little bit of drugs, but it was a whole other thing. And then I had another case also, which was a organized crime case, which was a drug case. That was a drug investigation. But I had two of the biggest cases in my in my group and one of the biggest cases in the country at the time right and and actually it's funny because when i got doxxed th that's the case that they exposed that's oh. why i can talk about it because it's a public record this sri lankan case but anyway um so i had this case uh and i was making the money and everything else like that i was doing i had my fitness business i was on youtube at this point as well and i was uh doing this case so they bring me in i'll never forget it was november of 2020 hey you know saying the shit on the internet what's going on i think i only had like ten thousand subscribers on youtube at the time so they kind of put me in a rock at a hard place it was like yo like you got to cut the youtube for a few months at this point we're starting to build momentum right like we had just got the studio i had just invested about forty to fifty thousand dollars into the studio oh, okay. i got the new spot right and we had the panels up and the cameras and all this other stuff so they tell me this we had filmed like two episodes so at this point we had employees also and all this other stuff because things were like you know going up so I was like damn what am i gonna do I went back and forth, trying to come to the middle ground with the agency, and they're like, "Nah, man, like, you gotta get off, get off social media." So I had to make a decision, and I resigned. I, I'll never forget. Yes. I resigned December fifth, twenty twenty, and it, it hurt, man. I turned in my badge, I turned in my credentials, I turned in my vest, I turned in all my equipment, my M four, all that crap, man, and it sucked. So, because um, I really did love that job, it, it made me a man. Like, um, you know, I make fun of a lot of YouTubers, like they don't have personal experience, yeah. they haven't been through adversity, whatever. Like at 24 years old, I was literally putting guns to cartel dudes' faces, right? I was arresting people. I was writing reports. I was testifying like like it was a really hard job. I was up late at night. Like I sacrificed my 20s on the southwest border in Texas. Wasn't drinking, wasn't partying, out in the middle of fucking nowhere in the desert and stuff like that. But I really, that job made me a man. So I, I have a very strong tie to it and I, I miss it. That's why I still do my FETA channel now where I cover like true crime and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um. So anyway, I had that money saved up, had the studio, had to walk away from the agency. So at that point, it was like do or die, right? Thankfully, I had saved the money. And what I did was also I cleaned out my uh, TSP or thrift savings plan for the government. And I bought my first real estate property, right? I bought it pretty much cash. Um, so I bought my first real estate property. We started generating money from YouTube and we had some courses out, et cetera. Um, so we were making money at that point and we had a Patreon, whatever. So And I was a minimalist. So it was we and i had already paid for everything pretty much like i used a credit card but i had the money cash so we were good at that point and you know we made it work and uh that's kind of how we got it started and then as we started scaling up etc bought more equipment 
invested back in the business, ended up working out. And then all the money I made, because like my number one thing was like, once I got out the government, I was like, okay, I need to replace this 120K per year job through real estate. I need to make about 10K per month to be able to hit that. So I just bought real estate aggressively that first year. I bought wow. seven properties in one year. Then the following year, I bought another five. And I was able to like double, triple that. Um, so I'm good now with real estate. I go, if I get canceled, like, ah, f you guys, I'm good, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But uh, but that was my number one goal was to replace that government income passively with real estate. Um, I own 12 properties now. And yeah, I mean, invest in crypto as well. Uh, you know, got some Ethereum, Bitcoin. I'm not a prof super pro like you, but I'm su super basic. And, you know, some precious metals, luxury watches, right, that hold value, nothing jeweled out or anything like that. Obviously, plain Jane. But that's kind of how it got started. I appreciate you sharing that because people are always wondering, you know, how do I start? I mean, even on the way here, we took an Uber and mm -hmm. the Uber driver was asking. They know you, by the way. They oh, nice. Me. Yeah, the Uber driver was like, you, yeah, and me. And they like, they loved everyone. And, and they're like, oh, like, how do you start? How do you start? And I'm like, well, watch the show. I'm going to yeah. ask Myron. Yeah. So, yeah. No, so, I, I would say the that. path is I, I had a job, right? So, I had a... Because everyone says, oh, I want to be an entrepreneur, I want to be an entrepreneur. And I really want guys to like understand that, you know, you know, there's this laptop lifestyle on the internet. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, dude, you could be an entrepreneur, nomad. blah, digital nomad, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Like, there's nothing wrong with working a job, a high earning job, right? Six figures, whatever it may be, taking that money, saving it, and investing it into assets that pay you back. Like, the goal isn't necessarily to be an entrepreneur. The goal is to be financially free. Yeah. You can get there through being an entrepreneur or having an earned income job. Nothing wrong with that. Um, the thing is, you might be do it a little bit slower, right? Working for someone else, um, but you can still become financially free if you invest in the right assets. My choice is always real estate because you get the tax benefits, you get the depreciation, you get the cost segregation, you get the cash flow, you get the appreciation. It's a W all around, right? Mm -hmm. And in the United States, right, it's probably one of the best ways to mitigate your tax liability. Well, thank you. Yeah, that's no useful. problem. Yeah, so that's what much. that's why I tell people all the time, man. <laughs> like, it's not about being an entrepreneur; it's about getting out the rat race and becoming financially free you can do it with a high earning job a high income skill you can be mm -hmm. a doctor lawyer invest in real estate you know invest in crypto whatever it may be get something to pay you back a dividend get that passive income and get the hell out and then once you've done all of that you've got to find a nice woman so yes let's let's <laughs> let's let's get let's get to the crux of this now so sure you talk a lot about this so many problems with women we kind of touched on it already um but i'm curious what would you say some of the main issues are with modern western women right now wow mm. okay so just don't don't hold back you won't offend me it's fine no it's fine it's fine i, I, I <laughs> wouldn't say you really fit into these uh things uh, because one of the ones i'm going to say the the foundation i would say the root problem is a lack of critical thinking skills okay and what i mean by this is they tend to go off of their feelings and not necessarily it's off how they feel versus what's real right so even in the face of logic and numbers it's about oh well i'm going to manifest it or i i hope it's going to happen i can't tell you how many times we have a delusion calculator on our show, yeah. right? And we'll ask a girl, okay, describe your dream man. We'll put his height in, six foot three, never fails. Really? $100,000 really? per oh, year. That's like, that's like it's like the magic height, yeah, oh, pretty much, okay. right? Or over six feet, okay. nine out of 10 times. You know, black or white or whatever it may be. Or sometimes they'll put all race. Do you want to be educated? Yeah, I'll, like a college degree would be nice, blah, blah. And then we, you know, and, the, and here's the thing. Our calculator is very accurate. It comes from the National Health Survey and from the U.S. Census Bureau. So it's the most accurate assessment of men in the United States. Mm -hmm. And it comes out to like 1%. And it, it literally, in a set, and it gets like a cat bag score to be like yeah, five yeah. out of five. So it'll get five out of five cat bags, right? And, and the girl will see like it's less than 1% of men. And I'll be like, okay, the chances of you finding this guy are literally like no, nowhere to be found. And they'll still say, I'm going to manifest it. Instead of dropping their standards and like thinking like, damn, do I qualify for this guy? I'm 32 years old. I got a master's degree. Like, is this guy going to want <laughs> me back? Degree. Right. And I make 100,000 plus a year, but I'm not that hot. I'm a little overweight. Do I qualify for this guy? Instead of having critical thinking skills and saying, I should probably lower my standards so I can find the man that I want, be able to have children, have a family, because that's going to give me real satisfaction. Mm -hmm. They say, no, I'm going to manifest it. He's out there somewhere. And the worst part, the girls at the table help them indulge in the delusion. Yeah girl you go you're gonna find them and i literally just let them go and i look say audience y'all see this this is why women perpetually stay single because they give each other terrible advice they coach each other and they don't say anything like to tell them the truth like girl you might want to lower your standards hell no they never tell each other the truth do you think um there are women that do deserve the, these kinds of men like do you think if a woman wants this she's actually not delusional is there a, like like do you, what do you have to be to be delusional is it like old and fat and master's degree i would like, say no nah, it's what I'm it's it's just it's just an unawareness of where they qualify mm. right so it's it's thinking i'm successful so i deserve a successful man and unfortunately the metrics to get that man aren't your success as a woman yeah 
I would say another big thing that is unspoken, and people get mad at me for saying this, is if a woman wants a guy that's higher status, higher earning, etc., you got to be prepared to share him, which means he's going to fuck other bitches, bro. It doesn't matter what you say. Every higher status guy typically has one or two or three girls. Maybe he has a main chick and he has a mistress. Maybe he has two or three wives, but they always, or they mess around with escorts, they always have other women. Mm-hmm. That's like the biggest thing that girls can't get over. But that comes back to that delusion. You're telling me you're an average looking girl and you think you deserve a top shelf guy and he's going to be monogamous to you? Like what? Mm-hmm. That's ridiculous. Guys don't go ahead and conquer the world and make all this money and be, get in shape and shit to fuck one bitch. That's ridiculous. That's literally ridiculous. And I tell girls all the time, I'm never going to be monogamous. I didn't like become a multi-millionaire fuck one bitch. That's stupid. That's why I think a man of God is, is is a good thing, you know, a good Christian man, a good Christian He's man. He's got one of the bitches too. Is he going to do it though? I'm thinking a good Christian man is... He would have to be super, super aligned with religion. And the thing is, is that honestly, that guy... He's going to go find a girl in the church. He's going to go find a girl that's like a virgin or some shit. Mm. He's going to go like out of his way to find like a, a girl that's like super religious like him, you know? So what other issues are there with uh, modern women? So, so, so we're delusional. Yeah. We lead with our emotions. Yeah. So um, lack of critical thinking skills, yeah. right? Fairly delusional about where they stand in the pecking order. Okay. Um, chasing the wrong things, right? Mm. So pursuing a career and income and thinking that's gonna make them more attractive to the man that they want. I can't tell you how many times we ask a girl, what do you bring to the table to a man that's successful? And they say, my money, my oh, status. Oh, she does? Oh, women, women say it all the time. All the time. Oh, all yeah. the time, dude. Because think about it. If they go to school and they pursue a master's degree yeah. or a bachelor's degree or they work really hard to get their job, they should be proud of it, right? I get it. Um, but we masculinize women and we tell them, go ahead and chase a career and make money and that's gonna make you more attractive to a man. And the reality is men really don't give a shit, but girls don't know this. They think that men care. Because the other thing too is that women think, another big mistake that modern day women have, they think attraction is symmetrical. But the reality is- What does that mean? So it's the same thing between men and women. But the reality is that it's asymmetrical. So the things that a man are attracted to versus the things that a woman are attracted to are completely different. What I mean by this is women typically look for survival value. Height, strength, income, competence, confidence, ambition. They look for um, skill sets that will allow the man to provision for her long-term and her children. Men, on the other hand, look for what I call replication value. Can you give me hot-ass kids? Are you hot? Are you fertile? Are you young? Is your hair long? Do you have nice (laughs) teeth? All these things, like men look for replication value, women look for survival value. So, But women, on the other hand, think that men look for survival value, which is absolutely ludicrous because when a man comes into a relationship with a woman, Most guys, at least the guys that women want, aren't looking like, oh, this chick's totally going to support me. Like, no. Very masculine men will not accept a dollar from a woman. Like, if I'm out with a girl, I will never let her pay because that's just like my thing. I'm not, what the hell? No, you're not going to pay. I'm I'm the one running this. And the other thing, too, why I tell guys why you got to pay for dates and lead dates, etc., is because you control the frame, which is inherently attractive. so funny. This is so funny to me because, um, and I, I'll try to like keep this, uh, I won't get so personal, sure, but I know I, I know um, a lot of different people in on, in the online space and I know how they how they interact personally um, in the real world mm-hmm. once they've taken off their online mask. And um, a lot of these men who, who are like, yeah, you got to hold frame and I'm the man and all that. Like yeah. they're, they're splitting bills with women. And Fuck that. No, it's really funny to me. They're, they're splitting bills with women. Unacceptable. And, and yeah, these, these are men that people know and I'm, yeah. and I'm here just like- Like me and wife four, we're gonna go out after this i'm not gonna let her pay why for yeah <laughs> she's off camera but <laughs> yeah of course but what if she what if she um has a not like a, a career but you know she has a job obviously you know so here's so she, my so thing she has money obviously not as much as you but mm-hmm. she has money um so should she, should you should you still be paying so here's my thing with women and jobs and everything i'm not anti-women working or of anti-women course. making money what my thing is i always say this right and it's kind of funny because women get mad at me when i say this right I think for a woman, working is elective. If you want to go out and pursue a career and make money, cool. But I will cover all the main bills, et cetera. You're my girl. I'm going to provide and take care of you because I think the man should be the breadwinner. And if a woman does want to work, it needs to be elective. Now, on the other side, right? Girls get mad at me when I say this. I think it's elective for a girl to come. Who cares about a girl's coming? The guy's got to come. Yeah, uh, see, I knew yeah. someone was going to get mad at that. I'm not mad. I just yeah. have a different opinion. So I think it's, so this is what, it, what I think it is. I think for a man, Working, well, excuse me, for a woman, working is elective. For a man, making his girl come is elective because a woman's job is to satisfy her man sexually. A man's job is to provide and protect for his woman. Because to be honest with you, men have to bring way more to the table than women do in general. 
So you want me to protect you, provide for you, be a leader, make more money than you, you know, be more competent, confident than you, and make you come? What the hell? That's not a fair trade. Like that's, think- that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to get into too much detail about this because that would be slightly unladylike. Fair but enough. what I will say, what I will say is, um, so I think working, I'll start with the working. I think working is elective. Um, yes. and, I, and I agree. Um, I think even if she makes a little bit of money, it's still all on him. But then if she decides to work, she still better be bringing what she needs to bring to the table, right? The femininity, the peace, the home, the nurture. Yeah. She decides to work. Yeah, once her work like gets into, you know, the messing with her head and hurting yeah. the quality of the relationship, that's when you got to cut those hours back, etc. cetera. Um, but, you know, I think she should be, I think women should have the comfort and the security. And I think every woman yearns for this, but they can't find it. Uh, being able to go to work or do whatever they do and be able to tell their boss at any point in time, fuck you, I don't need this job. Mm-hmm. I think every woman wants to be able to tell their boss that should they need to. Work if you want, but if your boss talks to you crazy, you can always say, fuck you, I don't need this job. My man takes care of me, motherfucker. I'll just get an allowance or some shit. I don't know. Yeah. But girls want that deep down. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Um, In terms of like the other stuff, you know, I I, I don't know. Like that, that's for every couple to decide. Oh, the they uh, the do. coming thing. Uh, yeah, that's no, I'm just being couple. funny. Yeah, that's for every couple to decide. But what I will say is, if you can't satisfy yeah. her in the bedroom, she's she may look elsewhere. So I'll leave that to you, Myron. You know, that's you, why I said it's elective. I'll leave that to you. <laughs> One out of every two sessions, maybe. Well, fifty well, percent of the time, you make her come, right? Uh, you you got to make sure she's happy. I'll leave yeah. that to you. Well, you're you're accomplishing all these other things. She should I'm, be happy. I'm sure that will satisfy her too. <laughs> anyway, um, so and most girls, yeah. real quick, get off on their guy getting off. Mo- uh, most women get not most but a, a, a large someone in the room just went mm, like percentage. wondering whether that was yeah <laughs> i don't know who said it was it so the your brother knows. The room? i feel like it was wife number four that said that M- maybe I her, yeah. oh, wasn't it my brother oh, okay <laughs> oh no it was her too <laughs> oh my brother okay um but a large a, a large amount of women do get off on their guy getting off you know what i mean because for women they understand that their value a lot of times comes from um their sexuality and their beauty and uh being able to satisfy a man sexually is a big thing for a woman because let's be honest here the main reason why guys deal with women is for their sexuality. That's the main reason. If girls don't have vaginas, guys want to talk to them. Let's be honest. Uh, do you know what? I, I agree. We're 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 annoying. We're we're a lot. There's a reason why they call homosexual guys gay because gay means merry and happy. Ah, I see. They deal with each there other. So, what would you say some of the <laughs> biggest differences are between um, Western women and Eastern women? And because like, I know that's something you talk a lot about. Um, yeah. So, I spent a good amount of time in uh, in Dubai, United Arab Emirates, and and they're, they're becoming Westernized. Don't don't make no mistake about sure. it. Like they're becoming mm-hmm. super Westernized, right? The women aren't covering their hair super haram, which I'm not the best super Muslim haram. either. So I'm being I'm a little bit of a hypocrite too. But um, when I spent, I noticed this when I was in Romania as well. Um, the women are just more feminine. They're more ladylike in general. Yeah. Um, here in America, like the women are super masculine. They'll talk to you like they're a guy. Uh, a lot more swearing, uh, a lot louder, a lot more crass. Um, you know, um, when you bring in a like when I one thing I notice about like f- with like foreign girls is um, especially like with Romanian women. If I bring them like around my friends or whatever, they're quiet. They don't like talk. You know what I mean? Like it's like okay, the men are talking. I'm just gonna be quiet, which I think is like a very. It's kind of like an understated thing that's attractive. It's like you're just there. You don't speak unless you're spoken to. You don't embarrass your guy. You make him look good. If it's at his house or whatever, you ask the guys if they want anything to drink. You bring them refreshments. Like, that's how I was raised. Like, I come from a two-parent household. Like, my mom, anytime my dad's friends came in, my mom always went to the, you know, kitchen immediately, made food, gave them refreshments. Like, my dad didn't have to say anything. Like, she just knew what time it was. She just made him look good every single time. Even when they came every day, she just made it happen. So, I think... That's something that's also lost in uh, Western women, like catering to their man and his friends and always making him look good and not embarrassing him. But American women a lot of times feel okay with talking to you crazy in front of your friends, yeah, talking back right. to you, disrespecting you, challenging your authority in front of your friends. Like these are all things that are super unattractive. Oh, I'm going to be witty and uh, rambunctious and like uh, tease my guy and uh, challenge him. What the fuck is that bullshit? Nobody wants that. Mm. I don't know what clown is telling girls like, yeah, challenge your man. Shut up. Like the world already challenges men. Like men don't want to be challenged by their girl. Shut up, make a sandwich, suck my dick a little bit. I'll be good. Um, so <laughs> it's funny that you say that because I, I think that um, those men are more masculine too. So uh, I think Eastern European yes, men yes. are more masculine. Mm-hmm. You know, the Arab men in the Middle East, yeah. they're more masculine. Whether, yeah. you know, Israeli men, they're more masculine even though- Them boys. Even though, yeah, people, <laughs> yeah, them boys. People yeah. don't really, anyway. Um, but so that's interesting. Why, why do you think that is? Like that is the place to go to find a husband or a wife, the other side. <laughs> well, typically the poor of the country, and I agree with Andrew on this. We've, talk, we've talked about this when yeah. I was in Romania hanging out with him, that typically the poorer country is, 
the more people revert to their natural gender roles, mm, right? Yeah. So, you know, you look at, you know, a Colombia, Thailand, uh, you know, Philippines, um, Brazil, South America, all the, uh, you know, Eastern Europe, uh, Ukraine, right? Ukraine used to be a huge place where guys would go to get girls. Uh, Romania, all these places, right? Russia, like people tend to, you know, align more with their natural gender roles because that's their natural state and it allows them to go ahead and fend off the elements, right? Better when they're in their natural gender roles, right? Mm -hmm. Like women understand that I am physically inferior to a man, so I should have a man do physical labor, et cetera, and go out and create excess resources for me and the children. I'm going to stay back and take care of the children and nurture them, et cetera. That's how things worked for centuries, right? That's how the world became the world that it is now, where we are able to have the, I call the privilege of being in a first world clown world where, you know, the gender roles are mixed and we don't know what the genders are and we don't know what a man is or a woman is. We can't even define what a woman is now anymore. So it's clown world stuff. So, but it's because of men and women being in their traditional gender roles for so long that we've been having to have, we've been able to have the privilege of people being able to not be able to distinguish genders anymore. That's mm -hmm. how good we have it. Yeah, it, it's like, I always say woke culture is born out of boredom and entitlement. Yes. So like things are so easy yes. that we can just pretend there's, you know, a virus going around. Yeah, let a war happen. Watch every, I all know. the guys, uh, <laughs> well, let's see all these crazy feminists. Let's see if they enroll in the draft. Let's they're see if the, they be going in the military. Kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you get a woman I, in the kitchen. They're going to put that war. apron on real quick and go back to making fucking sandwiches. So it's like, yeah. you know, anytime there's conflict, like here's the other thing too. Even with the craziest feminists, you know, I've asked this before on the show. Oh, women can do anything a man can do. Okay, not really. Like, if you're calling 911, you don't want, you know, two lesbians with butch haircuts to show up and be like, oh, what's the problem here? No, you want two dudes, toxically masculine, beards, chest yeah, hair, someone like you coming to in. Turn yeah, out basically right? with you a gun. Want, yeah, you want the, that guy to come in and save. You don't want, like, two lesbians that are five foot three out of shape and pudgy. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> you don't want them coming in to save the day. They're not going to save the day. They can't do it. And there's a dude there. I've seen, literally, I've seen police videos, right? And this coming from a guy in law enforcement. I've seen videos where I see two, two female officers. They can't even subdue one teenage guy. Them up and runs away. It's like, bro, what, what's, what's going on here, man? Yeah, what blows my mind is the fact that like that is just such an obvious reality that you're just not allowed to talk about. Or you're not no. allowed to say. Um, and speaking of Andrew, his interview on uh, Piers Morgan was so funny to me because he's like trying to convince Piers of these realities. Yeah. And I'm like, Piers, like, bro, like, what are you, what are you, what are you talking about? Yeah. This is just the UK humanity. took L on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did. we did. I think you had to do that to be a contrarian because I think deep down Piers Morgan understands that yes. world culture is bullshit. But he's employed by a big media company, etc. They just fired Tucker Carlson for being, you know, pretty big being too cool yeah mainstream <laughs> media is, is is going downhill man that was the last like you know bastion right there for mainstream media the fact that they got rid of tucker carlson it's it's all a wrap from here yeah no i totally agree with you um and i think now would be a great time to bring up your book sure why women deserve less <laughs> so myron why, why do i as a woman deserve less what did i do so <laughs> why yeah. am I a bad person so the, the the thing is the book is about not being a simp right so yeah, okay. Men in today's day and age, right, are kind of conditioned by old 1950 standards of being a gentleman and being chivalrous and, you know, doing all these things. And what I'm saying is that you got to change the game for men, right? Because you're basically, what I say now with dating is if you go ahead and you're chivalrous and you're a gentleman, you're a nice guy, that's basically bringing a butter knife to like a bazooka fight because dating has evolved so much in the past 60, 70 years, thanks to the advent of social media, dating apps, etc. Women have more options than ever before. So what that's done is that's directly influenced how women perceive men. And in general, right, I have a, a chapter on it that's kind of dark where I talk about most women simply don't like most men. So you need to get into that top percentage of men where women actually want to deal with you. Most women look at men as kind of like a means to an end to get to where they want, whether it's a free dinner, a sugar daddy, maybe a trip here or there, but they don't actually like you. And I want guys to get in a position where women actually like you and want to be around you, want to hang out with you, want to spend time with you because that's when you get the best treatment out of women is when they actually love, admire, and respect you. Mm -hmm. Not whereas you're a trick or doing this other stuff and you know women are just tolerating you, which was where most guys stand. Women are simply just tolerating them. I find that really sad. Like it for sucks. me personally, yeah. um, like I won't marry anyone unless I think the world of him. Like I really like I want to admire someone and yeah. be like, wow, like yeah. you are like, you know, mm -hmm. I don't want to put up with someone that's horrible. Yeah. And a lot of women do. And I, and I, and I, and I can yeah. understand that because I've seen how some of my girlfriends have just stayed in relationships. And I'm like, but, you know, he's kind of like this. And they're you know, they're, they're, they're happy with it. Whereas I'm just this is my theory. I call it the placeholder boyfriend. Right. So a lot of women, what they do is for fear of being alone, what they'll do is they'll 
get a guy that's just good enough, man. Maybe, you know, he makes just enough money. He's cute just enough. He, like, helps them not feel alone. But she still has her Instagram open. She's still going out with her girlfriend. She's still sourcing for a better man. Maybe she's going to a party here or there. Maybe she gets invited out and goes and gets flown out somewhere. Like, a lot of girls are in a position where they're with a guy that's just good enough, but he doesn't meet all the requirements, but he's good enough to be a placeholder boyfriend so she doesn't feel alone. She doesn't have to go to sleep at night all the time. She doesn't have to sleep with her, you know, Ben and Jerry's ice cream by herself. <laughs> so what I want guys to do also is I tell guys, if you're not the one, then there is none. You need to be the number one option where literally not only are you the one number one option, but all other men are virtually invisible to her. And you can only command that if you're a top tier guy and she feels like she has the best that she can get. Because when a woman feels that she has the best that she can get, all other men are virtually invisible to her. Hypergamy, which is the practice of dating up for a woman, is based in doubt. So a woman becomes more hypergamous wanting to get a better man when she doesn't know where her man stands. So I don't want guys to be a placeholder boyfriend. If you're just being tolerated or you're just good enough and she's still going out on girls' nights out, she's still hanging out with her guy friends or whatever, she doesn't respect you. She doesn't like you that much. It's just a matter of time until you get cut and a better guy comes in and takes your place. Mm. I'm interested because you said that the night you know you, you don't want men to be doing the 1950s chivalrous thing. Yeah, um, unfortunately. So, but but then, <coughs> but then um, I, I think correct me if I'm wrong. I think a woman who is raised right and like you know respects herself and has good values and sure. things like that won't want to be um, like messed around. And she can she's smart enough to know when she's being taken seriously and when he's just messing around. So ha, ha, w there has to be some kind of balance, like. You gotta be nice to like a woman, like you, you know, you gotta be nice to her, and it's not just fantastic about, point. It's not just about paying for her and covering the food, like her, maybe her dad can do that, maybe her brother can do that, maybe she can do that. Yeah, but it, you know, it's it's about like what, what what kindness and love do you give her? Then? So here's the balance. So what I say is, women have to earn chivalry in 2023 and beyond. Nowadays, right? Like I always say, chivalry is dead, and women killed it, right? And hmm. the the thing is, is that nowadays, what what guys have to do is. You have to make a woman earn you being a gentleman, right? Obviously, on a first date, right, you pay for the date, whatever. That's just a given, right? Basic stuff like that. But you shouldn't even be going out on the first date with her unless she's compliant, she's submissive, she's you're, she's giving you some semblance of respect, right? If you, you, you know, say, hey, we're going to meet here at this time, blah, blah, blah. She doesn't try to switch it up and say, let's go to Poppy Steak or some other bullshit like that, <laughs> right? And try to dictate the frame or trying to go to an expensive place because she doesn't like you that much. So yep. I say you need to show that chivalry and that respect, Um if the girl earns it. The days of you just giving it away, those days are gone because the problem is that when you're nice to a girl up front and you're chivalrous up front, she's gonna take that as weakness and she's gonna use it to finesse you a lot of the time. Is every woman like that? No, but I teach guys, this is how you gotta move unless the woman proves otherwise. It's on her to prove otherwise. So when you say the examples that you gave of not earning it yeah. sounded like pretty, just like uh, no, like normal behavior, like, like don't, you know, if he, like just fall into his frame. If he set a date, just say yes. If he's done that, like what you said to me sounded kind of odd. So About which part? Say you set a date with you and a woman. Mm -hmm. Can you give me an example of how she then doesn't earn the chivalry? Like what is she doing? She's saying, actually, I don't want to go there. I want to go here. Like if well, you suggest, say you say, say you suggest like Mila, which is a lovely restaurant in Miami. And she's yeah. like, actually, I'd rather go to Pappy Steak. Is that her not earning it? Yeah, th so th that's a red flag. Right, but Th are women that's doing that? Like that's absolutely. Like, see, this is where this is where like my 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 thing with like the content, I don't understand because I don't yeah. know women like that. Like if a man's like to me, I'm taking you to Mila. I'm gonna be like, oh my god, thank you. Yeah. You know, I'm so excited. Yeah, what, like great. I'm so, not like, can we go to Pappy's? And and I don't blame you for not knowing because you're a female, so you don't deal with fuckery from other females. That's fortunately true. for you, but yeah, so. Um, what happens is, right, when a woman doesn't like you like that, right, a, a telltale sign is she'll try to switch the date up on you. Maybe she'll try to get a more extravagant experience because she doesn't like you that much. So what she's trying to do is she's trying to basically extract the most value from the interaction that she can from you, right, because she doesn't like you that much. Typically, when a girl likes you, uh, she'll be okay with whatever it is because she just wants to spend time with you. Mm -hmm. But if she doesn't like you that much, she's going to try to switch the date up on you. She's going to try to do something else that benefits her more than you. These are all red flags that men need to look for. So when I say that women need to earn chivalry, uh, her not falling into your frame is an example or a red flag where you need to kind of come in. And some girls do that just to test you, right? I've had girls before where they'll try that bullshit. And I'm like, no, that's not how we're going to do the things. And sometimes they'll get in line just off of that. Right, because they're like, Whoa, what's the first time a guy's told me, No, this is hot? Right, yeah. but most guys, a lot of times, are like, Oh, you want to go there? Sure, let's go. I'll bring you some flowers too. Oh, That's God. what I don't want guys doing. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, and what other ways um, does a woman not earn the chivalry? Like, what else can she do so he doesn't 
So he pulls back and doesn't do the nice So from the female perspective, from the male perspective, because when I give advice, so here's the thing, when I give advice to women versus men, you always have to give one gender an advantage when you give dispense advice to them that puts the other one at a disadvantage. That's dating, right? Within dating, one party always has to care more than the other. The party that cares less has a leverage. Now, my argument is that the man needs to have the leverage at all times in a relationship for it to work. Because when a man has a leverage and the woman feels like she has the best man that she can get, she's chasing his validation, all men are invisible to her, it keeps her happy, satisfies the hypergamy. Men, on the other hand, <laughs> if, if we have the leverage, yeah, we might go fuck another bitch or whatever, but your girl is your girl. Like, you're not gonna care about other women the same as like your main chick or main chicks. So when a man has the leverage, it just works better for everybody. Everybody's satisfied. That's so funny. It can satisfy the hypergamy. That's yes, incredible. you had to satisfy the hypergamy. That that's it's, the biggest that's so, thing where guys so mess up. up. I know, because women are always looking for the best deal. Yeah. So you had to become that best deal, and that's why I tell guys, yo, the days of being an average guy making fifty k per year, it's done. Mm. It's fucking done. You need to make six figures. You need to have money saved. You need to have um your shit together. You got to be in shape in the gym. It's unacceptable to be fat. That's why I tell guys, if you're fat. You're a fucking loser. I don't have no sympathy for fat people whatsoever. If you're a fat man, you're, if you're a fat chick, you can still get a date. You're a fat dude, bro. You better be a multi multi millionaire. It's in the gym. But mm-hmm. being an average guy nowadays, you're you're done, bro. Like you literally have to satisfy female hypergamy. You can only do that by having everything in check. Being charismatic, being charming, being uh, in shape, getting your money on point, uh, being dominant, being confident. You need all these things in place to be able to get a girl in line. Even average women are not going to accept a guy that's above average anymore. Mm. And get them to f- submit. Like, they'll tolerate you, right? Like, th- you'll get a date. You'll get girls to date you. You'll get. You'll be able to keep a girlfriend, whatever. But I want you to be in a position where she's like, holy fuck. Yeah. I have the fear of God that if this guy leaves me, my life is going to suck. That's what I want. Where, where I want guys to be. Where they have the woman where she's infatuated with him. That's the only way you get the best out of women. They have to care about you and respect you and love you more than you love them. No, I, I, think, I think that's pretty right i don't disagree and it sucks because that's how i wish it could be like chivalry where i could show up on a first date with flowers and give you the world baby and oh my god let me put my jacket on the fucking puddle (laughs) and all this shit i wish it could be like that Uh but unfortunately women respond horribly to nice guys and we have all the evidence to prove it you look at guys nowadays how many dudes are in the friend zone Mm. a million right girls are out here going on dates i think there was a study done one in three to 50 percent of women go on dates for free dinners craziness okay so that that bit's really weird to me because i'm hearing and by the way this just isn't a thing in england and i don't care what anyone says england is just way more low-key than it is in america i'm hearing like women are getting flown out here and they're flown out there so i've never done that none of my girlfriends from home have ever done that it's all very uh bizarre to me um the reason it's bizarre to me because it's like why would you want to fly somewhere and like put up with someone like i i wouldn't want to be in a foreign country with someone that i don't know that well like, I don't feel safe. I don't I don't like that. Like, you know, maybe he expects sex from you. Like, it's, it's all just too much when you just rather stay home with your parents at well, this point. Well, the, the reason I why, mean? A, b- a big reason why, and I'll tell you, is because a lot of women value experiences over dignity. And what I mean by that mm. is I can't tell you how many attractive girls I know that have been to on private jets and Lamborghinis and Ferraris in Tulum and, you know, Dubai, et cetera, going, getting these crazy extravagant experiences they want to put it up on their Instagram because girls love to flex against each other and like, look at my lifestyle, bitch. So look at this, blah, blah, blah. So girls will sit there and sell their soul for it. I can't tell you how many girls, I mean, hell, wife number four knows this. We had a girl on the show, right, yesterday, literally that said, I used to be a nurse. I was a higher earner making 100K plus per year. But she said, fuck it. I prefer to go on OnlyFans, make more money so I can live a certain lifestyle. Like living a certain lifestyle and acquiring experiences and material things means a lot to women. Like, it really means a lot. That's why if you look at girls on Instagram, whatever, it's all just a big flex on other girls. Look at where I'm at. Look at this selfie. Look at me in this Ferrari. Look at this extravagant lifestyle that I live. But what girls don't realize, another big thing that modern-day women don't realize, is anytime you take a picture in a Ferrari on a private jet in foreign locations, whatever, like, dudes think, slut, ho, 304. But girls think that that shit is cool, but they they do it to flex on other women. Mm, It's so weird. It's so strange to me. So what's your ideal woman? Silent, make sandwiches, sex. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Give us a little bit more than that. No, nah, no, nah, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm very simple when it comes to girls. Like if, if she's respectful, not a hoe, doesn't embarrass me, um, quiet, if I need her to do things for me, respects me, etc. that's going to be good, man. Accentuates my life. If I need something done or whatever, hey, like girls typically that I've had 
uh, stick with by my side most of the time. It's like this is going to sound evil when I say this, but you need a girl to kind of do things for you yes. to really fall in love with you. Like women fall in love through giving acts of servitude to a man that they admire and respect. Mm -hmm. So you have to put a girl to work, right? A lot of guys like kind of just put a girl, like they, they get a girl and they don't like have her do nothing and she don't respect them because he's not doing shit, blah, blah, blah. You have to put a girl to work because a girl's not going to grow to love you until she invests in you. And the thing where guys make a big mistake is they invest everything in the relationship and the girl doesn't do shit, Right. But the girl, you got to get her to invest in you. I would argue you need to get the girl to invest in you more than you invest in her. That's how she gets really connected. And women need that bond. They need that emotional connection. And them doing acts of servitude helps with that. What do you prefer? A woman who um, is trainable or okay. a woman who is already red-pilled, understands that mold or is there no difference? You're happy with both. Like, do you can you be bothered to train a woman? Uh, I think a girl. I think that's an important component. A girl's got to be. Here's the thing. I'll take a dumb girl all day if she's inquisitive, impressionable, and trainable. Because I can make her smart, smarter. Right. My leader. I have you know, I have the confidence. That I have the competence to make her a better woman. And I think most girls that end up being like the best girlfriends. Their boyfriend has to train him to a degree. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is what I need you to do for me. Because the man is a leader. A component of leadership is being able to instruct people and lead them to success and to get her, your girl to be the best girlfriend that she could be. You have to lead her. You know, but the, the problem is that a lot of guys don't have leadership skills. They ask mm -hmm. their girl, what do you want to do? Oh they my let God, her lead that's so all this stupidity. Like, you know, I always say it like people, oh, you're sexist, but you're misogynistic. But I'm realistic. Most women don't even know what the fuck they want to eat for lunch. Mm. How the hell do you expect her to guide you in life? Like, no, like women are not born leaders. There's a reason why since the beginning of time, men have led societies and patriarchy stand the test of time and matriarchies die off because women aren't born leaders. They're too emotional. They're not deductive problem solvers. They don't use rationale. They use feelings. And that's a problem. When you use feelings, that's a bad thing. If you look at men that use feelings, what are they? School shooters, criminals, rapists, murderers, etc., pedophiles, because they're off going off of emotion. They're not able to control themselves. When men aren't able to control their emotions, really bad things happen because men are capable of violence and savagery. But when women aren't able to control their emotions, it's like, eh, it's kind of natural for them. So that's why men need to be in leadership roles because women aren't natural leaders. Are there women that can lead? Right. There's always exceptions to the rules. There's always going to be fantastic women that could be lead and be boss and all this other stuff. But on the balance of probabilities, most can't. Mm -hmm. I ask because, um, so when I was about 19, 20, <clears throat> yeah. I, would, I wouldn't say I was like a feminist, but I was definitely- <laughs> You were one was, of those? No, 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 it wasn't crazy uh, feminist. Okay. But, but I was definitely, um, you know, I, I thought that I, I was proud, you know, to make okay. my own money. And, and you know, I, I, I like um, intellectual things, like I like politics and crypto and whatever. And so I'm like, yeah, that'll be fun to work in that area. And, you know, I, I can do it and I can, mm -hmm. you know, um, but as time's gone on, you know, I'm lucky I have an older brother. I would say he's definitely like knocked a lot of ideas out of me, mm -hmm. I guess, you know, like maybe see things in a, in a, in a Male leadership, way. baby. Yeah. So now I would say, you know, like I have like this trained mindset. So I feel like my brother's like prepared me for the right man. But th so, but I'm curious, is there something which men prefer a woman who he doesn't need to train? Like, of course she needs to be trained to his liking, right? Of and, course. How, and how he likes everything to go, how, you know, he likes the food, you know, my future husband isn't going to like his chicken season the way my brother likes his chicken season, of you know, course. it's all different. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But I'm saying, is that more valued over a woman who doesn't know anything and then you got to like take all this time to just like train her and teach her and, you know, debate with her and... So you, you're like in a fantastic position and I've always said this too, like, well, you know, women you. say... That's very positive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I really do love the relationship that you have with <laughs> your brother you. and that's, that's great. I wish more women had it because if more women had it, they would be better girlfriends and or wives in the future. And the thing is, is that I've said this before and I'll say it again. The best person to advise a woman is her brother her father, her uncle, men that don't have a sexual interest in her. Why? Because they're going to give her the real deal. Hey, this is what you need to do. This is how you be attractive, etc. And they can give you truly objective advice that's going to make you the best counterpart for a man of value, right? Because they don't have a sexual interest in you, so they're going to keep it a thousand, right? So that's one thing. I think that need, that's something that I wish stood more, but you know, we have fatherless households, broken families. It's something that's rare, which is why I really uh, admire this, this relationship that you have with your brother. But um, I would say... If they don't have that, I would say trainable is good. And the reason why I tell guys is you need to be able to train your girls because unfortunately a lot of women don't have, you know, a strong brother, a father, etc. So you have to come in and you have to be that leader and teach her how to be a good girlfriend a lot of the times. So it used to be, right, like 50, 60 years ago when chivalry was a thing, by the way, 
You can meet a girl and she came what I call pre-assembled. She came from a two-parent household. Her father and her mother instilled certain values in her. She understood what it was to be a lady. You didn't have to do too much work. Like you know, an average guy would could be rest assured that he'd be able to get a woman and she'd be a dutiful wife and she'd be a good wife and she'd raise his children and they'd be able to, you know, get the white picket fence and, you know, the family, nuclear family, dog, two kids, all that. But those days are done, man. Women aren't necessarily women anymore. Mm-hmm. Like women are more masculinized now and you have to almost train that out of them to a degree right now i don't have a problem with women that want to enter the workforce and make money etc my issue is that when they prioritize that over family and children because at the end of the day the nuclear family is the backbone of any thriving society but it's going down the hill and i know people might say well myron you're contradicting because you teach guys how to get laid blah 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 blah. yeah (laughs) and here's here's my argument to that i wish it was the 1950s i wish nuclear families were a thing i wish two-parent households were a thing but my thing is i don't make excuses and cry i give solutions you have to adapt to the ever-changing marketplace so one of my controversial takes is i tell guys for you to be a good counterpart in today's day and age you need to be making six figures per year have six months to one year savings be in shape uh be um uh be 35 years old before you think of marriage right because at that point you have some wisdom in you and had sex with 50 girls and everyone looks at me whoa five zero five zero and everyone's whoa that's crazy 50 isn't really that much in today's day and age. I know girls that do that in a semester in college. If you meet, I don't. <laughs> I know, I know. I know you don't, but like I'm telling you, a lot of girls get around. Like if you meet a girl that went to a good university and she was in a sorority or she was involved in sports or something, bro, she's going to ha- by the time she's out of there, she's going to have at least 20 bodies. At least. And here's the thing. I always tell guys this. The reason why you need to have these things in place as a man. So your brother agrees with me. Yeah, I know he agrees with everything. Yeah. <laughs> he's not like let me he's tell you what. <laughs> so this is the, so this is the analogy, right? Let's go into a dream world real quick. Like woo, right? Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> so imagine that you got to get into a ring, right? But you've never trained in martial arts. You never trained in any, you know, mixed martial arts combat. You've never fought in your life. You're a fucking white belt, okay? But in three days, you got to get in the ring with someone that's a black belt that's been training for 20 years. What's going to happen when you get in that ring? Getting killed. You're going to get fucked up, right? Yeah. That is the dynamics between a man and a woman. And I'll explain. Mm, that's true. By the time a woman hits puberty, she's been hit on and talked to by the opposite gender thousands of times. So she's become very good at deflecting losers, figuring out who's a winner, figuring out this guy's confident, this guy's a weirdo, this guy's a higher status guy, this guy is, eh, I'm just going to finesse him for whatever. Women become black belts in the game of dating and dealing with the opposite gender. Men, on the other hand, he might not work up the courage to talk to a girl until he's 22. No. So you have, what, 10 years behind a woman? So you're going to go ahead at 35 years old, no sexual experience, or worse yet, mid-20s, no sexual experience, no money, no status, no um, gym, no competence, no nothing, and you're going to go ahead and get in the ring with a woman by the time she's 25, she's a black belt with dealing with the opposite gender, she's going to finesse you all over the place because she knows what to tell you, she knows how to appease to your ego, you're dumbass, oh my God, you're so good. Meanwhile, you were three pumps and you fucking came, like- women know how to get in a guy's head so if a guy isn't aware and hasn't been training in the gym right what worked up to a black belt so he can at least compete Mm -hmm. like he's gonna get finessed and destroyed so that's what i always say like the dating dynamic between a man and a woman a lot of the time the woman is a black belt beating the shit out of the guy but the guy doesn't even realize it until he walks into divorce court loses half his money didn't realize it wow i got famous because he didn't have the sexual experience he didn't have what I call the backlog, the encyclopedia of dealing with a bunch of women to figure out which girls are good, which girls are bad, which girls are hoes, which girls are wife material, which girls are worthy of uh, dating seriously, which girls are not. You got to be able to figure all this shit out. You got to be able to put women in boxes because you, <laughs> women definitely put men in boxes. They meet this guy, sugar daddy, this guy, trick, this guy, okay, I can actually date him. Okay, this guy, loser, mm-hmm. this guy, friend zone. Like women put dudes in boxes all day, but dudes, first girl that fucking says hello, wife. Aww. wife <laughs> wife yeah woo fucking idiot and then this guy might be worth a hundred thousand two hundred thousand doesn't know any better gets finessed mm. so my thing is i tell guys go in the fucking dojo and train you need to go ahead and spar with a bunch of people and figure it out because by the time you meet your girl your dream girl by the time she's 21 she's a 10 degree black belt bro she's deflecting losers all over the place she knows how to do the aikido as you know andrew would say so guys gotta get in the ring and train man and guys don't want to fucking train they want to wipe up the first girl that comes to them and get fucked up 
so let's get into more of this. What is Rent the... over, my <laughs> No, it's great. I love it. Thank you for it. I love the energy that you bring. It's Amen. amazing. Um, so what then is the problem with modern men? Because right now, men are running to people like Jordan Peterson, Andrew Tate, you know, you... Um, uh, Elon Musk even is becoming like this 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 guy this guy for men you know he's got multiple children with multiple different women yeah good for him I, you know I'm happy for him um so why are men so uh, desperate to seek out some kind of role model that just sets the standard so you know it's interesting because I get criticized all the time because they say oh Myron all you do is bash women people need to watch the daytime show because I go even harder on the guys the reason why we're in this fucked up world where women are masculine, fat, annoying, stupid, crass, etc. <laughs> is because funny. the men can't put women in their place. So it mm. starts with the men. The men aren't leaders, so the women are going crazy, acting crazy. And that's what it is. And the reason why is because guys are fat. They're not going to the gym. They're not training. They're not learning a discipline. They're not... Um, they're just they're broke they're bums like there's no ambition they're smoking fucking weed every day oh. don't even get me started on 420 while you losers were over there smoking pot on 420 i was doing four sets of 20 at 3 a.m in the fucking morning Ooh. the problem <laughs> is that guys right have no real semblance of you must accomplish things right competence leads to accomplishments which then leads to confidence guys think i'm gonna magically manufacture some confidence somewhere no you're gonna get confidence from your competence and accomplishments but guys don't understand that it goes in a trajectory. That's how it goes. You have to accomplish something so that you have the confidence so women actually respect you. The reason why women look at confidence so much in a man is because it's an honest indicator you've fucking done something. But the problem is that so many guys haven't done shit. Mm. They're smoking pot all day. They're whacking off to porn. They're not being social. They're not getting out, them out there and putting themselves in uncomfortable positions. More guys need to learn how to be comfortable being uncomfortable but we live in this pussified fucking society where we can't bully guys anymore everyone's getting a participation trophy people aren't playing sports boys are fucking fat they're not fighting anymore you need to put guys in competition situations where there's winners and fucking losers because when you have losers what ends up happening it's like damn i lost i need to go reassess what i did train harder so that i can come back and win some of my best lessons came from what an l there's no such thing as losses if you're a man and actually on your purpose. It's just lessons learned. But the thing is, is that we got a, got a bunch of so I'm just going to say it. Mm -hmm. Soft mother, really soft. It's pathetic. Mm -hmm. It's really pathetic. When I see bullshit like, um, I'll give you an example. I was watching this video. It went viral. This fucking bus driver, right? The kids weren't listening, that, right? And they were like fucking standing up. And the bus driver's like, hey, sit in your seats or else y'all are going to get a lesson. And then the kid's like, ah! what does he do? Hits the fucking brakes. All the kids, oh, oh no. Fucking hit their heads and shit. I was like, yo, they used to do that shit to us all the fucking time. Guess what happens? All the fucking pussified parents. Oh, we need to report this bus driver. He, my kid got hurt, blah, blah, blah. No, that's fantastic. It's a life lesson. Mm -hmm. Follow instructions or get hurt. Mm -hmm. But we, we can't do that shit no more. Kids are so fucking soft nowadays. Like bullying? Oh my God. Cyber bullying. Bro, I wish these motherfuckers were playing Xbox Live in 2004. Yeah. Yo, the crazy shit, man. I don't, man, I, I'm not even going to say it. But the crazy shit that you would hear when you got on Xbox Live, that shit made you have thick skin, right? Men grow stronger by bullying each other, fighting each other. Just, it, it's what, it's how you earn your stripes. But guys aren't earning stripes anymore. Mm hmm. They're trying to call themselves a tiger with no fucking stripes. What the hell's going on? You must suffer as a man. If you don't suffer as a man, you're not going to learn how to overcome adver adversity. If you don't learn how, over learn how to overcome adversity, you're not going to become anything. That's why we got, that's why, honestly, a lot of these YouTubers that critique us and all this other shit that talk shit, <laughs> I don't respect them. Yeah. They didn't have a real job. They never did anything. They, they really never accomplished anything. So these fucking guys, Larry, you're a fucking loser, blah, 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 blah. What the fuck have you done? You know, I thank God that I actually had a real job, mm. did some real shit before I became a millionaire. Like, if I had become a millionaire, like, in my mid-20s or some shit, haven't accomplished anything, I'd be a fucking pussy. I'd be soft. Oh, yeah, look at me. I'm so cool, blah, blah, But no, I did real shit. So, and I went through a lot of fucking uh, adversity, right? Fucking arguing with FBI agents over a fucking case, arguing with DA agents coming to blow sometimes over, this is our seizure, no, it's not, blah, blah, blah. Fighting with upper management to get money for my cases to get funded fucking fighting for overtime it's it was a very difficult job you know arresting some of the worst people arresting pedophiles arresting corrupt cops all this shit i've done but it made me a stronger man it made me grow up immediately mm -hmm. right in my 20s instead of going out and partying and doing all this other fuck shit i was like learning how to become a man and i think that's what guys need to do 
enough guy, not enough guys are going out there and suffering. You need to get out there and fucking suffer. And the easiest way to do that is going to the gym. It amazes me how many young guys don't train. Mm-hmm. How the fuck are you expecting to get a dick, bitch to suck your dick when you can't even lift your stomach? Mm-hmm. What the hell is going on here? This is ridiculous. Clown world. But we sit here and say, oh, no, it's okay. It's okay to be fat. Ridiculousness, man. I could rant about this all day, but no, it's, 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 I know y'all only got amount of films. No, so. it, it's true. It's funny. Um, I'm just trying to like figure out where, uh, like how much personal information to give here. Um, I mean, I like, <laughs> I just like, I don't know. I mean, I, I had a, there was a guy that wanted to date me and he was actually quite fat. And I was just like, I was almost like offended. I'm like, I'm be. in the gym four times a week. Yeah. And like, you, 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 you like, you want to like marry me and I'm, and like you're overweight what you know i'm just like i'm like just just lose, lose some weight like i don't understand i'm in the gym four times a week yeah you know when you're um, fat you so. quite effectively don't respect yourself right so how can i respect you if yeah. you yeah no exactly and it's very simple it's not that difficult not to ask you to go out and kill a bear and bring it home you know yeah. it's easier today um and, and, it, and, and if you're fat also it shows that you lack discipline which is yeah. a cornerstone of success as a man mm-hmm. if you can't even control what the fuck goes in your mouth how the hell are you going to control anything else? The yeah. one thing you can control is your fitness and your weight. You can't control that. What the fuck yeah. is going like, on? How are you going to control all the bad, dangerous things that could potentially happen to me as your woman if you can't control? You can't ever chase somebody yeah. down. Exactly. Incredible. Yeah, exactly. And you know, like uh, going back to how it is in schools with participation trophies and everything. I don't know what it is like in the States, but in England, mm-hmm. um, teachers aren't allowed to write in red anymore because that scares the kids. So you know how like <laughs> they would do like tick, cross and, and all this stuff with, on your work, give you feedback in red. Now it has to be in purple wow yeah cause my mom's a teacher so she was telling me yo they, yeah they failed society i've said this so many times like we bring girls on the pod and they're f- we need to go back to telling people that they're stupid mm-hmm. because here's the thing we need to stop positively reinforcing stupidity oh no your opinion is valid your opinion is valid <laughs> whatever happened to telling people their opinion is fucking wrong mm. you're stupid one plus one is two the sky is blue i don't give a fuck about your feelings you're dumb mm-hmm. change the way that you think we need to stop validifying stupidity yeah that's true like stop like i don't know what is going on here like we live in this crazy world right where we think that everyone's opinion right is valid and should be heard but here's the thing people right have different life experiences there are different points in their life and unfortunately people right a lot of times give their opinion based off how they feel no you got to go off of what's real and what's objective this whole my truth thing anytime yeah. someone says my truth i'm like low iq mm-hmm. there's just one truth there's no my truth it's the truth mm-hmm. that's how it goes one fucking truth man but everyone thinks my truth matters my truth matters no you're just a fucking moron that's how you <laughs> feel and that's not necessarily what's real but it's crazy to me like that we sit here and we li- literally let morons talk about how they feel like it matters. It doesn't fucking matter. You're an idiot. Get the fuck out of here. You're a pussy. You don't see the world for what it really is. My feelings. Everyone should get a voice. No, everyone shouldn't get a voice because there's a lot of idiots. You know, like the average person's IQ is like, what, like 80 or some shit like that? 80, that. 90? Fucking morons everywhere. Mm-hmm. Like the more I, uh, in, in, uh, you know, the more I talk with people and everything else like that, I just realize like people are so fucking stupid mm-hmm. in general. Like people lack, it's not just women too. It's everyone, mm-hmm. men, exactly. women, a lot of these libtards on the left, no. they lack critical thinking skills. They really do. Whoa, there's 97 genders. Oh, oh, that's problematic. Like what the <laughs> fuck is going on? Calling their hair blue and shit like that. Fat as fuck, mm-hmm. looking like shit, talking shit about us. Losers like H3 and Lasan Fegabi. Like incredible. <laughs> incredible and these guys have big platforms and they're indoctrinating a bunch of fucking pussies yeah. to think about their feelings and how, oh my god this is the way it should be bruh there's certain things that are just a fact regardless of how you feel mm-hmm. anyway yeah no i think it's brilliant i love this energy and i love everything that you guys talk about you know making men men again yeah. women like me we need this we yeah. admire this That's women why need leadership like they do. like guys are too fucking soft how the hell are you going to lead someone when you're incompetent, you're fat, mm-hmm. etc.? Like, like, and I always say, right? Like, if you look at the battlefield, right? If you're like out in war and you're, sh- you know, you're fighting the enemy, etc., and your fucking lieutenant comes in, like, oh my god, I don't know what we're gonna do. Oh my god! Like, do you think your soldiers are gonna fucking follow you? No, they're gonna be like, what the fuck is going on? They're gonna go off their own, and quite effectively, that's what's happening in relationships. The guys are incompetent. The girls at the girl has to fucking come in and take leadership, etc. And guys wonder why women don't respect them. Women, guys wonder why they can't get sex out of their girl guys wonder why she's out here talking to her co-workers they wonder why she's what why does she need all this attention it's because you're a pussy she doesn't respect you doesn't she doesn't like you she's just tolerating you you're a placeholder boyfriend okay so let's change gears a little bit sure 
Um, okay, so what can a woman do to retain a man? And before you answer, sure. I also want to understand what can a woman do to make herself available to him so she knows that, so he knows that she's interested, but then not coming across as like, too crazy because obviously a man from what i've learned from my brother i've, I've un understood that a man wants to know that she's about him yeah like I i'm for you you're the man i want you right yeah. that's apparently how it needs to go so but then isn't can't she come on too strong like what can a woman do so do you want me to speak for me or objectively like for men in general it wouldn't it be the same no, because I, I've learned some things that I've had to kind of uh, learn from like my experience. For example, I'd like to I give both. an example. Thank you. So, right, it used to be if a girl bothered me a lot and texted me a lot, I would get annoyed and frustrated, and be like, mm. "What the fuck?" But then I realized, oh, this girl's not a slut. She's actually invested, and she doesn't do this all the time, which is why she's annoying the shit out of me because she feels a sense of connection because she's like, okay, I don't hook up with anyone, so bam, immediately she she's like bonding to me, right? So I'm like, okay, that's cool, sweet. right? So I'm like, uh, I used to get annoyed by that, but then I was like, no, that's actually a good sign. So I've come to respect that and um, tolerate it more where, where it used to annoy me, right? Uh, but I would say is like for a girl in general, right? So like that's my thing, right? I got annoyed, but it, it took me some time to figure it out, right? So that's some personal reflection. But for a gr woman in general, right? Obviously, don't be annoying about it. But what I would say is like you got to come in and figure out where the guy is deficient and then kind of come in and fill that void. Mm -hmm. And when awesome. women are – and here's the thing too. Like women are fantastic at like being socially aware, socially calibrated, seeing things. They can walk into a room and read the room. Like women need to take that skill set and be able to figure out what their guy needs, right? So like if you go into his place and you realize, okay, this guy – probably need some fucking spoons or some shit like that this guy you know most guys are bachelor pad guys and they don't have shit maybe one spoon one fork bring in like a silver, a silver set or some, something like that right mm -hmm. yeah, bring some spoons and forks you'll be like wow he's really gonna appreciate that because dude I can't tell you how many guys go through life and they've never received anything from a woman ever besides their mom so a girl being like um, creative and thoughtful like that goes a mile okay. like, like really far because most girls don't give guys shit but what if it's early and like you don't know I'm asking for personal reasons. No, 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 that's fine, that's what fine. What if you don't know where, like, where the gap is in his life and you just, you, you see him, you're like, okay, that that's a cool one, I like him. Yeah, I, I think I think uh, women are too scared of um, showing interest and they're too mm, scared of true. investing early on because women are, de like, typically aren't used to investing. But what I would say is if the guy's a winner, you got to kind of set it, start, you know, stand out from the other girls and investing in a guy early on, it's a risk. It's always a risk, right? Because you don't know where that man stands. He might want to just fuck bitches and he might not even want a serious girlfriend. Or you might have to do, here's another thing that's unpopular, but I tell girls all the time. You might have to play the waiting game. And what I mean by this is, understand, like, let's say he's not willing to commit, but you really like him. You're just always there. You're always available. You're the one that pretty much rides it out. You're the one that writes it out. I can't tell you how many times where one of my main chicks, like, she just wrote it out longer than the other girls and provided more value over a longer period of time. I was like, God damn. Okay, and then she starts to get privileges and certain accesses that other girls aren't, and then just by virtue of her being around and being available, being useful, being an asset, I can't kick her to the curb because she's too goddamn useful. And what what will end up happening? And I've always said like when a woman is like coachable and trainable, that man will train her to a, into a woman that he will grow to eventually love. This is why the guy's got to be a leadership role. When a woman changes a man, she's gonna change him into something she's eventually gonna hate and resent because he was able to change, right? But when a man is able to change a girl into what he needs, he's gonna grow to love her because she's like, damn, I can't operate with this girl. Like, bro, I don't even know how to do my laundry or nothing. Like, like once a woman becomes an indispensable piece of that man's repertoire. You fucking got them. But that takes time. That takes investment. That takes risking. That takes also the uh, the ability to be like, okay, he's he might fuck other bitches. He's not ready right now, but I'm going to stand the test of time. And at the end of the day, all these other hoes are going to come in and out. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be for him. And then trust me, they're going to notice that. Because the thing about modern day women is this. Women have so many options nowadays that they're not patient. So since they have so many options, they're like, why am I going to wait on this guy? I got this MLB player talking to me. I got this NBA player over here. I got this NFL player. So since women have all these options, what ends up happening is they conflate those options with real um, relationship opportunities. And the two are not the same. Just because you can fuck this guy doesn't mean you can retain this guy. Mm -hmm. So if you do find the guy that you like, you think he's worth it, etc. It's on the girl too to have some critical thinking skills and figure out if the guy's worth it. Mm -hmm. But... I can't tell you how many times just playing the long game and being there and lasting all outlasting all the other girls and adding value, bruh, he has no choice but to pick you. 
And even if you don't, even if you don't get like picked as like the main main girl, you're gonna still be one of the girls. Mm. That's, loyalty. that's loyalty, and that's very very difficult to find with the way women are. Because women are taught to trade up. Women are taught to find another guy. Women are taught to date and exercise options, etc. If you go against the grain and you actually stay loyal to that guy over the long period of time, and you and the big thing is outlasting the other girls, man, that's gonna leave a crazy impression. So just adding as much value as possible, just always being there. Yeah. And just I can't tell you how many up. times like girls that are like not even the hottest of the hot, they yeah, just outlasted true. other hot girls. Because I've always said it, hot girls are useless because they've rarely had to be useful in their mm -hmm. life. So mm -hmm. even if you're a girl that's like maybe six, seven, whatever, you're going to outlast a bad bitch because bad bitches are useless. Yeah. So difficult. It's difficult. It's competitive. And, the, yeah. the, and this is the thing. This is the, the thing with, for women that they don't understand. The problem is that there's not enough eligible bachelors to go around. Exactly. So for women, it really sucks because the more successful you are, the prettier you are, the more money you have, etc. You're competing for a very small pool of men. So the way you're gonna win a lot of times is just outla outlasting mm -hmm. the other girls. This is literally what my brother tells me. My, like my brother will tell me like, no, you should speak to this guy, and I'm like, no, I shouldn't, and you know, and he's like, no, no, Leia, you should, you should, and I'm like, all right, I'll do it because you tell me to. Yeah, you know? higher status men a lot of the times aren't gonna chase women. Yeah. That's the, that's another thing too that kind of women need to understand is that like once you get with a guy that has options, etc., you you're gonna have to do a good amount of the pursuing. Mm -hmm. you Interesting. Know? And and it might be for a period of time, but you'll start to notice that you're like getting a more serious position. He's like, hey, I'm gonna go do this. You wanna come with me? You wanna travel with me? Or he starts inviting you into more personal things, introduces you to his friends or whatever maybe. These are all like good signs that you're like moving up the totem pole. Fascinating. That's really, really interesting. Okay, let, let, let's keep this going. Help um, him get other girls? Oh, shit. Help you get other girls? I can't do that. I, I can't do that. But that would really set you apart too. Yeah. He'd be I like, God damn. Because <laughs> most girls can, the more things that you could do that other women aren't willing to do, Get other uh, get other women. Oh, I know it's I tough. I could do that. One. I know it's tough. It's I don't tough. know. Hey, let, let me let me enable your cheating on me. Let me enable this. I don't know if I could. I would much rather add even more value in a different way, so that he's like, yeah. I don't want to lose that by cheating on her. Yeah, but, but you're just but like I'm that's saying, not how it is. I'm, so. I mean, like with a higher <laughs> status guy, if you're able to do that again, I'm giving you the game and the cheat codes mm -hmm. to beat out other girls because most girls are not it. willing to do that. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Thanks, Myron. Yeah. Um. So I'm really curious. How do you have such a great understanding of men and women? You know, you, what are you like? 30, 33. 33. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty young. How do you? Yeah. So it's a unique situation, right? So when I was an agent, I had informants that were both women and men. I had suspects that I talked to that were both women and men. And I realized that you have to talk to the two genders differently, right? Um. So that was kind of like the, the the basis, like right when you're trying to get information from people, you really need to understand them, especially when you're getting information from them that's like can put them in jail for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. So you have to figure out how to talk to the two genders and talk to them differently. And then um, doing the podcast, right? And then men, I just have a, obviously I'm a guy, so men are very simple. Like we all are you? Yeah, we are, dude. Look at your brother; he's been nodding with everything <laughs> I say. We agree on most of the things. It's just that the things that. That men can't really be vocal about the things that they want to say. That's why people love Andrew so much yeah. because he's very candid and upfront about what men really want and how they feel about things. And society honestly can't handle it, which is why he went viral because these are conversations that men have in private and locker rooms, et cetera, and women can't handle the truth in general. That's why there was the outrage and uh, you know it is what it is. But a lot of men think this way. The only difference between me and Andrew and everybody else is that we just have the balls to say it out in public for fear of getting canceled or losing our jobs or whatever. In my case, losing, you know, getting being put in a position where it's like resign or you know leave whatever mm -hmm. well sorry you got to leave youtube or you got to resign one of the two whatever the fuck but either way um just operating on caffeine now no sleep <laughs> uh but going back to the original thing um, yeah how did how did you learn so much about male yes and, and then dynamics? Uh, i've interviewed now well over two thousand women right. on the show from different walks of life so that's created like a whole you know backlog of like how women think and i've just noticed very similar um uh, things between different women regardless of income level education whatever and all i've noticed that when a woman is more educated and makes more money she just tends to be more vocal and more articulate about what she wants out of her partner and less like less likely to settle the more education more money she makes the the more likely there to be they'll say I'd, I'd rather be single than be with a loser because if you think about it the whole a big reason why women chase a career and making money etc what do they say when they make money i'm independent Ask yourself, independent of who? Men. When men make money, we don't say, we're independent. They look at you like, what? You fucking gay? What's wrong with you, bro? Like, no. Like, men make money so that a family can be dependent upon them. Women make money to be independent of the men they don't want. Mm. So, 
my thing is is that uh, when women make their own money, they're just even more ten toes down on their standards of what they want because that's the reason they went to get the education in the first place to set themselves apart and in their head get a higher value man because they think back to what I said attraction is symmetrical. I make hundred thousand per year now I can get a guy that makes hundred thousand, but they don't realize they're actually shooting themselves in the foot doing that. Yeah. So just through interviewing. Interviewing my prior experience with yeah. you know talking to you know bad guys that are both women and men in for, dealing with informants that was really uh, telling on how you need to talk to the true denders when I had female informants versus male informants um, so all these things helped a lot and I've talked with like so many different types of people from all different walks of life I mean I'll never forget this one interview uh, when I was an agent it was like a random Sunday I was on call and um, I get a call. And they're like uh, at the border patrol station, right? Because on the southwest border, there's border patrol, border patrol stations everywhere. And they're always catching illegal aliens trying to enter the country, whatever. So I was like, why the fuck are they calling me? So they call me and they're like, hey, there's this guy who wants to provide information. And he has information at the time. I was I was in Laredo, Texas, which across the border was Losetas that ran it. This is back in like 2015, 2016. Now I think it's Cartel del Nordeste, but I'm out of the game now. Okay. But anyway, so... I'm like, you know what? I'll talk to the guy because I, I was always, I was very hungry. I was like, I, I'll get more informants. At the time, I was controlling like six or seven informants. Informants is how you make cases. So I go over there, talk with the guy, and you know, I identify myself, etc. He's like, I don't want to talk to any border patrol agents. I'll talk to a special agent, blah blah blah, because he knows that they're the investigators, etc., and they can actually make shit happen. So I'm talking with him, and he's like, okay, so this is what I do. I am a, a sicario. I basically write by American terms. He used it in Spanish, but. Um, and his job, he was protecting, I think it was Z42, uh, one, one of the Trevino brothers, right, um, at the time. And they're the ones that ran the Losetas back then. And his job, right, because there was a war going on between the Losetas and the Mexican Marines, right? And that's the military. Like, they, they're beyond police now. That's how bad the corruption is. So they're fighting with armored cars, machine guns, all this crap. So this guy's job was anytime they were driving in their motorcade and the Mexican Marines would attack them, his job was to create a diversion, to lay some cover fire and then let the boss get away and then he got paid a bonus for every single mexican marine he killed and what he mm -hmm. did was he would cut a body part off and bring it back to the boss so that he can say these are the people i killed and he would pay him a bonus for each body party brought because that was a, a body uh, that meant for someone he killed that's how much they hated the mexican marines and the way he talked about it so candid and matter of fact or whatever it was like bone chilling right but i was able to get that information from being like you know just kind of playing off of him right, right. not being judgmental you know we call it uh, kind of like you don't want to. I don't want to say empathizing, but you're kind of minimizing. You're, you're you got yeah. You have to befriend them. That's yeah. a big part of it. And then you you minimize their situation. Oh well, it's not like you're touching kids, right? It's like it's you you know you can only go low, so low, yeah, right? Exactly. But it's like yeah, I get it. You know you, you had to make this happen, right? You yeah. got to protect your family, got to feed your family, etc. So it's kind of a sick tactic, but that's what you have to do to empathize mm -hmm. with these crooks and get the most information. So little tactics like that is what I learned because like you know when you're talking with the worst of the worst to delusional women it makes it way easier i love the comparison it's yeah it's brilliant. crazy dude um, all the different yeah, spectrums it's, it's, yeah very well versed one video actually of yours popped up recently um and it blew my mind mm -hmm. um and i thought i've never heard this before you're the first person who's ever brought this to likes i feel like i'm pretty like based or well read and all sorts of things but this one i've never heard of um you were basically talking about mummy's boys and how in the west if a man is close with his mother yeah. he's considered a loser and a mummy's boy mm -hmm. um and then you then went on to explain the reason why this is so let's get into this i sure. absolutely loved what you said so explain why is being a mummy's boy actually a good thing or like why are they attacking the relationship between a man and his mother so Going back to what I said before, remember how I said uh, yes, when you're, ever. you know, doing the karate and everything else like that and you're a black belt? If you're a mommy's boy, you're automatically elevated to blue belt. And the mm. reason why is because your mom, right, is an installation or first line of defense when you deal with problematic women, if she's a good mom. Yeah. She, you know, you bring in a chick that's, you know, a, a leech, right? She's not really adding too much value, etc. Your mom will meet that woman be like, mm, no, I'm good. Especially if her, her son is a higher earner, he has a lot to lose, etc. Your, your mom is going to kind of come in and like be a vulture on that chick. This is why so many women hate mommy's boys because your the mom, a lot of the times, is going to defend the son from vulturous women because women understand women better than anybody else. And this is why I say women don't get along with each other because they understand each other. Um, so the reason why in the West they hate that is because when you live in pro-feminist countries where divorce highly favors women, etc., the mom a lot of times gets in the way of the woman being able to extract the resources from the son through marriage and divorce court and the state. 
that's why they hate us so much. But if you go to like other countries where you know gender roles are traditional, etc., it's not that big of a deal for a man to be a mama's boy because mm-hmm. the mom, uh, so, excuse me, the woman, she's a daddy's girl, right? Just like I said before, the brother and the dad a lot of times protect the daughter from fuckery from the men. <laughs> same thing with the sister and the mom if they come from a good family. They should be doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. This chick ain't good for you. What the fuck are you doing? She's a whore. I know she is, you know, or she just wants you for your money, whatever. She's able to like snap the guy out of reality a bit because a lot of times the guy's just like, she touched my pee pee. Let's do it. <laughs> you know, so yeah. the mom or the sister, if they're a good sibling, they kind of come in or a good mother. First line of defense. Same thing with, and that's what families should do. Yeah. They should protect their siblings from the opposite gender a lot of times because when your sibling or your mom or your father comes in, there's no sexual interest. So they're able to give you objective, good advice from the other party. Mm. I think I mean my brother's in his late twenties, but I think when he gets to marriage age, so like thirty five, mm-hmm. I think I'll be hundred percent. I'll be terrible. Any yeah. woman that comes yeah. that comes in, I'll be like, don't like that one, don't like that one. That's mm, the way it's got to be too. Worth it. Mm, yeah, yeah. That's the way it's got to be. And I think this is why family is so important because if a family does its job correctly, right, they're very protective of who comes in because they're looking at it like you're not going to come in and fuck up what we created here. Mm. So a um, um, mommy's boy, a lot of times that mom is the first line of defense, which is why she's so hated in the West, because she is the first line of defense from the divorce courts destroying her son, but if it, she's a good mom. Yeah, and, and it's true, because if a girlfriend said to me, oh, don't go for him, he's a mommy's boy, you would naturally just be put off, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, wouldn't we? Yeah, we'd yeah. be put off. So that's, when you said that, I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. And that actually makes sense, because at the same time, I wouldn't want to marry a man who has a bad relationship with his mother. Like, that would be a red flag. So if we don't want a man who has a bad relationship with his mother, yet we don't want, yet we don't want a man that's a mummy's boy, what are, we, what are we doing? Well, it comes back to the contradictory nature of, like, what women exactly. want in the West in general, right? Yes. They want a gentleman, but they, they, they want a guy that, no. like, can <laughs> to choke him and bang him, like, crazy, right? Like, the you know, they, you call, um like, the... Uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, right? Uh, Christian Grey. They want that guy, right? But at the same time, they want a chivalrous, nice guy. And and it's really, the guy has to, again, coming back to the, the men, right? It's on, The burning performance is on us. You have to have a combination of the two. But a lot of the times, what women want is contradictory to what they're aroused by. They'll say, I want this, but the reality is what they're aroused by are two different things. Yeah, and that's something which I think your content does really well. And it's something that I'm learning. Because I saw a video the other day saying um, women never go for the men they want. They always go for the safe option. So now I'm like, I'm not going for the safe option. I'm going to get the man I want. That's what I'm going to like. That's yeah. Yeah. So that's really interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, I tell girls like go for the man that you want when you still have the sexual market value to command that man that you want. Because it's, you know, unfortunately for women. Right. You only have a finite amount of time to yeah. get the guy that you want. A woman's sexual market value, unfortunately, is perishable. Now, here's the thing. Right. It's 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 so I always say so like with women. Right. When you're at your peak, you burn bright and strong. No one can stop you. Like literally like uh, it's like, um, you know, I talked about uh, I, I love Tate's analogy on this where he talks about the um, the queen on the chessboard. Right. You can move as many spaces as you want. One of the most powerful pieces on the board. But here's the problem. You can die and the game will still continue. And on top of that, I can get a pawn to the other side and turn her into a queen. Mm. So it's on women to understand that you have this power for a finite amount of time. Get the guy when you have that power mm. for, before another pawn replaces you. Yeah, it's a hard, difficult world out there. It's, it's a hard world. Yeah. But it's hard for men as well. It's, and it's tough. It's and they've done this like, it's literally like, um, they, they did this study like, um, when you like an ice cream shop, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, like when you have four flavors, people are far more likely to yeah. pick a flavor that they want versus when you have 20, 30 flavors, it's very difficult. They don't make a, they don't make a selection. They don't buy and then they leave. I think that's kind of where women are right now with the dating game. So many options, so many guys hitting them up, etc. It's very difficult to decipher. And, and I do again, empathize with women because I understand the female struggle, right? I've seen plenty of women's DMS. I've seen it from the other perspective, like women are bombarded with choice. So it's really difficult when all these high status but guys are hitting you choice, up. not good choice though because this is what men keep getting wrong. Like I've seen it all the time. Men are going yeah. on about how like, oh, you have so much choice. You have like, true. No, but like they're losers. Yes. Like they're not, like not good choice. Like it's not as if they're like all these high value men that are just ready to marry yeah. you. It's not A lot true. of them are just losers offering dick and even yeah. the higher status guys, they're just offering dick. So it's really difficult for women to like figure out which guy is going to take me seriously, right? Because the guy that is attractive that's arousing a lot of times is a bad boy is he going to commit and then the guy that's super nice says, oh give me some flowers he's fucking boring you don't want to be with him so oh, it's it's a very <laughs> difficult situation but i would say if you find if, if you're attractive you got the sexual market value go for the guy that you want outlast the other chicks yeah at least you'll be happy with that guy that's true if it does work out and if you take an l 
that's the risk of being a female. Mm-hmm. Men have to take risks too, but men have to take risks. Women have to take risks as well. Yeah, I, you know, absolutely. Um, I'm curious. Do you think that the red pill content can ever go too far? So I ask because it's pretty wild on the internet right For now. Sure. Um, and I, I, I keep seeing um, like really ugly 50 year old men celebrating when um, a woman shows um, signs of aging. Uh-huh. And, and, it's, and it's like, ha ha, Emma Watson, she's aging. Oh, and it's God. like this ugly 50 year old broke yeah. man. And it's like, and then, and then everyone like celebrates. And then like, it's like, do you not feel like you've got a bit too far? Like we all age, you know? Yeah. Like, can we not just get on and be friends? Which point? I, I would come on. My, my uh, you're good. It's fine. Point Which point? No, I know. Oh, no. Because that's a different point. It. No, because then Myron's going to be like. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. The broke man can't say shit. Okay, yeah, okay. I'll say it. They can't hear you. They can't hear you. It's fine. I'll, I'll, make the point that okay, I'll make the point. Okay. Yeah. Right. So there's a man that I saw on Twitter yeah. that was basically um, laughing at Emma Watson because she's showing signs of aging. Oh my God, she hit 31 or 30. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Terrible. Mm-hmm. So, um, but, the, but the crazy thing is, as my brother was just alluding to, um, that Emma Watson is more successful and has more money than this man who's completely broke. Mm-hmm. And all he can do is just be fat and ugly, be alone, and then laugh at a woman for aging. So... So can does the red pill content go too far? Like at what point are you an incel and a loser? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I've always said, right. So, so here, here's the thing. So I always look at like the manosphere in general, like we're all using the same tool, right? We all are using RP awareness, right? Which is understanding female nature and adapting to it. Now everyone has a different strategy. Some guys understand the nature and teach guys how to adapt to it in the modern day dating place. Hey, dating marketplace, you got to become the best man and let the women be a byproduct. Some guys say, I'm going to go on my own and go MGTOW and say, I'm not going to deal with women at all. Some guys are black pill and like, oh my God, life sucks, blah, blah, blah. But we all are using the same tool, which is red P- RP awareness, which is the same thing I would say, you know, what's this, the similarity between a serial killer, a culinary chef and your mom? Well, they all use a knife to make food, right? Well, they all use a knife. Some people are doing it to make mm. exquisite meals. Other people are doing it to slice you up, but they're all using the same tool for different purposes. So my thing is I tell guys, my, if you want to go ahead and leave the marketplace and not deal with women, cool. But I want you to make that decision, not women make that decision for you. If you're going to go your own way, you go your own way. Don't sit there and cope. Don't say and get sent your own way. So with these guys that are mad or whatever, a lot of the guys are mad because let's be honest, maybe they got rejected. They have a tough time with dealing with women. And the way guys look at it is this, right? So, and I'll give you kind of the perspective. I don't necessarily agree with like laughing at ch- chicks that are getting old. But the reason why guys laugh at it is because I always say that women quite effectively are trust fund babies. Men are self-made millionaires. So whenever you see a trust fund baby, you know, blow all their money on Coke and hookers in Vegas and become a bum, you laugh because you're like, what the fuck? You had the opportunity of a lifetime and you blew it. That's how a lot of women have it, right? All women basically are trust fund babies and can use their money and invest it properly and become a multi multi millionaire. Men, on the other hand, they have to become that multimillionaire. And there's a slim chance of that being honest. Let's be honest. Are our guys going to be at the top 1%? No, but that's what women are chasing. So that's why so many guys get a gratification out of it because they're like, bitch, you had the world and you fucked up. Now, is that the correct way to adapt to it? Probably not. You know, laughing at old chicks is like, you know, that gets old, but no pun intended. Mm-hmm. But you know, it is what it is. Yeah, no, I um, appreciate you uh, explaining that. Yeah. Um. So y- you are very vocal on the internet and your, um, your content gets extremely rowdy. And I know you have kicked women off many different times oh, yeah. have you ever been demonetized or have you ever been um, afraid that any of your content will be taken down yeah i mean uh definitely we've you know with the type of content that we make i already know it's volatile people are always gonna i've been banned off tiktok and you know videos have been taken down etc uh you know we just got out of youtube jail we had a strike or whatever so yeah this type of content i foresee like in the next year or two anything that's like pro-masculine content anything that's conservative or whatever it's probably going to get flagged or whatever. You can't be honest nowadays. It's crazy, man, which is why Rumble is like blowing up. If you look, I mean, hell, they even got crazy liberals on there as well. So oh, do they? even on Rumble, but it's mostly conservatives, right? You got your, you know, your Steven Crowder's Trump's son is over there. Um, you know, a lot of great content creators over there, but I think Rumble's going to be the future, honestly, with all this stuff going on with YouTube. Yeah, I definitely think um, new alternative platforms will be the future. My only concern, and you can give me your take on this, is sure. um, centralized platforms when there's like a CEO and things like that. Since my native interest is crypto, yeah. I'm more driven to things which are decentralized. Of course. So something like, so I don't know if you, have you heard of Tommy Net? 
No, I never have. So Tommy Net are building a new decentralized internet. Um, it's like a it's a whole infrastructure. So it, they have like a privacy coin. They have a VPN. They have an internet. They have a, a content platform. Like a whole thing. Nice. Yeah. So I'm so driven towards something like that, which is more decentralized. What, what do you think? Do you, do you ever feel concerned that there could be like a falling out with a CEO, or perhaps like everybody has a price and you suddenly feel mm, that centralized? I might have to move to something more decentralized. Yeah. Um. So we we know the president of rumble personally and he's real big on free speech i mean hell he's lost um pretty much access in certain countries for wanting to protect that free oh, speech wow. so they're pretty serious about it yeah. um so i i do see rumble as the future um for you know any content creators that like kind of veer on the edge of you know being provocative or mm -hmm. controversial um but yeah man i mean that's kind of how we've hedged against it. obviously i invest in real estate heavily right you know we can get i we always make jokes on the top of our show when we talk about rumble like hey we can get canceled anytime so it is what it is so like i think this is you know people got to be smart invest in assets that pay them back you know thankfully i'm in a position now where if i got canceled i'd be fine i'd be doing and I, i'm a minimalist anyway so no matter but um my thing is like it's not necessarily about like making the most money possible i really want to be able to you know get as many guys in the gym being attractive, not being fucking losers, whatever. Because at the end of the day, man, like, you know, money is great and all, but it's like, it's not everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, especially in me where it's like, I'm not a, the nicest thing I have is this AP and I only bought it because it holds value. It looks really so. nice, by the way. I don't know. I don't know about watches. The uh, watch looks really nice. They're great. Thank you. They're, they're great hold of value. That's the only reason I got What's it. What's it called? It's an AP. An AP. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. I have no idea what it is. Okay, what? Audemars PK. Yeah. Apparently, okay. No, it looks great. I didn't know. No, what I appreciate it. Was, it. I appreciate really nice. it. But yeah. yeah, like when it comes to anything nice that I have, like if I'm gonna buy something, it better hold value or appreciate over time. Like that's yeah. my biggest thing. That's why, like you know, I don't diamond it out or do anything stupid to bust it down. Mm -hmm. You know. So, but yeah, I'm trying to get into different asset classes. I got real estate, precious metals, uh, cryptocurrency. Obviously, you better be getting into Bitcoin, my right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like really I got a couple Bitcoin. A couple. That's two. What are you talking about? Well, <laughs> a little bit more. More <laughs> than three. More than two. More than two. Uh, quite a, got a good amount of Ethereum, um, but yeah, I'm definitely gonna um, I'm gonna be buying right now because Ethereum is a little bit low. It's around it 1800 yeah. as of the time we're recording this. So I'm definitely gonna buy some more Ethereum. And where can people like keep, get in touch with you or follow you and just find out everything that you're doing? Yeah, um, plug yourself. YouTube Fresh and Fit. You know Rumble, Instagram Unplug Fit, Instagram Fresh and Fit. We're all over the place. You'll probably see us on you know some article getting hated on by feminists. Mm -hmm. Sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but Myron, I want to thank you so much. It's thank been you so for fascinating. Me. And um, I also want to thank you for the tips about how to secure a high value man. I'm going to take Damn. that with me. And next you time go. you see me, maybe I'll be married. Yeah, I'll see you Who with knows? a ring. You'll see me with a ring on there the correct go. finger. <laughs> Just outlast the hose, man. That's outlast what you got to do. Hose. Outlast the hose. You got this. Yeah, thanks, Myron. <laughs> Guys, make sure you check out Fresh and Fit. They're brilliant, I think, for men and for women. Um, I absolutely Appreciate love that. the content. So thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. Thanks so much for watching. If you did enjoy this content, then please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe as we'll be bringing you a lot more of it. We'll see you next week. Peace.